this optimization problem asks you to do the following. You have 400 meters of fence. First, I would like you to build a big rectangle. So see this, see this picture? I would like you to build a big rectangle. And then inside this rectangle, I want you to divide this. So spend some fence to do a divider. So see this red line? So you build a divider to divide the big rectangle into two area with if into two places with equal area. Your job is, I already labeled the graph for you, right? So I have a big rectangle and then I call the length x and then the width is equals to y. I want you to find the optimal dimension. So what x, what is x equals to, what is y equals to, that maximize the area of this big rectangle. So the area, we don't know, but you have some material. The material is 400 meters of fence. So that is your material. You have to build a big rectangle first and then use some of the fence to make a divider in the middle that cut the rectangle into two equal to two places with equal area. So what is x, what is y that maximize the area for me. Okay, so what is x, what is y? So the first step is you have to draw a graph, make sure your graph is nice and big and make sure you label everything. And then step two is you have to draw a primary function. So what is primary? The primary, the job is maximum area, right? So what is area? Area of this big rectangle is the length times width. So area is equals to 2x, that is the length, and then times the width, that is a y, right? So this function has two variables, x and y. We can just do the derivatives like this. So therefore, we need a secondary function. So other than this, we have 400 meters of fence. So that is for the perimeter. So what is the perimeter of a rectangle? So the perimeter of this rectangle is equals to what? Uh, that is equals to we have 4x and 3y, right? So that is 4x plus 3y. So that is the perimeter that is equals to 400. So I plug in the 400 that is equals to 4x plus 3y. Let's isolate the y on one side. So we have 400 minus 4x equals to 3y and then divide both sides by 3. We have y equals to 400 minus 4x divided by 3, right? And then we will plug in this y. Okay, let's don't draw over the 3. So we will plug in this y to the primary. So what is the primary? So now the primary is no longer a, that is a of x, which is equals to 2x times, times what? Times uh, 400 minus 4x divided by 3. So that is your primary. Uh, in this one, I would like to keep the fraction outside. So I will just do a of x. I will keep the two third outside and then distribute the x. So you get a 400x and then minus 4x squared, right? So minus 4x squared. So that is your primary function. And then the next step is you will have to do the derivative. Okay, so let's move up. Let's do the derivative. So the next step, I will just call that derivative and critical number. So step four, so that will be step four. So that is derivative and critical number. So a prime of x. So the tutor, the tutor is a constant, so we keep the tutor in there. All we have to do is we take the derivative of the parenthesis, right? So that is a 400, right? And then you bring the two down, so that is an ax. So now the derivative is done. You have to set that equals to zero. Why do we have to set that equals to zero? First, we have to find the critical number. So what's the concept behind this? So let's say you have a parabola. Uh, let's say you have this parabola and then at this point, there is a maximum, right? So what else can we say at this point? At this point, we know it is a maximum because at this point, the function, the parabola has a horizontal tangent line. So horizontal tangent line means the slope is equals to zero. Slope equals to zero means we have to set the first derivative equals to zero. So that's why we set that equals to zero because we are looking for a horizontal tangent line and then this is a horizontal tangent line, so that means that is either a minimum or a maximum, right? So as long as you can prove that increasing, decreasing, then that point is a maximum. So let's erase this. How do we solve for zero? I mean, solve for x. So first of all, once you multiply both sides by the fraction, then the fraction is gone. So all you have to do is you have to 400 minus ax 
equals to zero, so that is 400 equals to 8x, and then 400 divided by 8 is equals to 50, so x is equals to 50 meters. Is this our final answer? I would just say not yet, because you have to prove that the area is maximized when x is equals to 50. So at this point, I would just say this is a critical number. In the previous problem, I thought that the next step is you have to use the second derivative test, but is there an alternative method other than using the second derivative test? The answer is absolutely yes. So if you do not want to use the second derivative test, you can just test the minimum, absolute minimum, or maximum uh, using the, the domain. So, But first of all, we have to figure out the domain. So step five, so we have to figure out the find the min or max. So this time, let's don't use the second derivative test. So if you don't want to use the second derivative test, so this problem is okay if you don't want to use the second derivative test, but this method might not work once a while. So what is the total parameters? Just just the parameters. So what? How, how many meters of fence do you have? So the total is p equals to 400 meters, right? You already know that uh, what, what about when x is equals to zero? So the minimum of x is x equals to zero, right? So that is the minimum of x. And then what about the maximum of x? How, how big can x go? So the maximum of x, what is that equal to? So if the minimum of x is equals to zero, the maximum of x is, can you look at the picture and tell me? You take the 400, right? You divide it by four, that is equals to 100. So if x is equals to 100, that means there is no fence for y, right? When, look at the picture, there are four copies of x. So if you take the 400, you take the total, divided by four, that means you spend all the fence on x and not spending any fence on y. So the maximum of x is equals to 100, right? So that means the domain of the domain is what, what is the do domain? The domain of A. So the domain of A is x is between zero and 100. So when x is equals to zero, you don't have length at all. When x is equals to 100, you don't have width at all, right? And then we will be using this domain to find the absolute min or max. How do we do that? We use this table. So the minimum of x is x equals to zero, the maximum is 100, and then what is our critical number? Our critical number is 50, right? And then you plug it in to a of x. Where is a of x? a of x is uh, right, right over here. You plug that into a of x. Okay, so when x is equals to zero, inside the parentheses you have a zero only, right? When x is equals to 100, I already did the test for you, so that is equals to 100 as well. And then when x is equals to 50, you have two thirds times 10,000. So this is the largest area you can get. So this is called the absolute maximum when x is equals to 50. So we just proved that for the area function, when x is equals to 50, there is, it is a absolute maximum. All right, so it is a absolute maximum. Are we done? No, we are not done. You have to find y for me. So how do you find y? So remember that, do you see this? 400 is equals to 4x plus 3y. So I'm going to bring it down. So we have 400 equals to 4x plus 3y, right? And then you plug in 50. So you have a 400 equals to 4 times 50 plus 3y. So that is a 400 equals to 200, right? And then plus 3y, and then you have 200 equals to 3y. And then what is y equals to? y is equals to 200 divided by 3 feet. So don't, uh, don't approximate that. You have to provide the exact answer to your boss. So the optimal dimension that maximize the area is when x is equals to 50. Oh, it's not feet, right? I use meters. Okay, so let me change this to meters. So when x is equals to 50 meters, y equals to that many meters, the area is maximized. And then you provide a picture to your boss and then you say this, so you draw a rectangle 
and then cut that into uh, make a divider in the middle. So that cuts the area into two pieces. And then what is X? So this is a 50, this is a 50, so this is a 50, this is a 50, and then the Y is 200 over 3, so 200 over 3, and 200 over 3. And then you say, hey, uh, follow this picture, so the area of the rectangle will be maximized. Okay, so that is the end of this problem. Do you like it? Is this helpful? If so, give me a like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you all in the next lesson.